everybody happy friday it is the first of october today um so i'm in the i'm in the mood for autumn and seasonal stuff and um, hope you're well it's quite bright actually outside today um has been raining a lot though so i don't know whether it will stay dry today so let me know um where you're watching from how you're doing what's the weather like where you are um and I'll say a quick good morning to you and then start with today's make. Um, today we are going to be making some beautiful multi-wrap bracelets. So um, it's going to be one long length and it's going to give the illusion of wearing multiple bracelets. They're really, really pretty and fairly straightforward to do. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there are instructions as well with today's kit if you purchase one. Now, I've not seen those instructions, so I don't know if I'm showing you exactly the same method, but Either way, whether you're watching the tutorial and following along or you're using the instructions in your kit, it will give you the same effect. Um, so good morning to you all. Um, I think I'm going to show you straight away. Um, I'm going to take you straight over to the website. Let me click and show you our lovely website and products today. And then you can um, have a little look at them while you're saying good morning to each other. So... Um, if you go on to totallybeads.co.uk, you can click on the video tutorial logo at the top, or you can scroll down here and click on the video tutorials this way. So you can see today we are doing um, the wrap bracelet with the glass pearls, and you can choose from a few different colours. They're all very, very lovely. Um, there is an offer on as well. If you do buy all five, you'll only pay for four. And they're only three pounds. So absolute bargains as usual. So you can click on whichever colour you prefer. We've got one called Lagoon, which is kind of like a icy pale blue. We've got deep violet and um, black a mulberry, which is a gorgeous kind of reddishy purpley pink colour um, and we've also got the um, pure white so if we have a little look in whichever one you think takes your fancy you can see um, you're getting one string of your six millimeter glass brown pearls you're getting uh, two pieces of your resin button um, which is what we're going to use as the clasp and you're also going to get approximately it's about two millimeter of your silky rat tail cord in whichever color you prefer as i say they are three pounds you can add a needle and thread in there as well if you like um so these are what's in your kits today including those instructions so absolute bargain don't forget if you decide to buy all of them if you choose all five colours, you're only going to pay for four. So a lovely, lovely bargain there for you. So I'm just going to say good morning to you all. Uh, so good morning, Anne. Hope you're well. Good morning, Lucy. We've got Edward with us this morning. He's wishing everybody okay. Good morning, Francis. Good morning, Sue. Gwen, Rachel says, good morning, everybody. Well, it's rubbish weather here in South Yorkshire. It's autumn, isn't it now? 1st of October. Oh, and with that, it started to absolutely team down outside, <laughs> right on cue. So yeah, wet, a little bit windy, but bright. It's, it's doing everything, I think, today. And good morning to you, Ruth. Uh, good morning to... Is it Shafika? Is am I pronouncing that right, Shafika? Good morning to Janice. And no petrol, um, so beading is keeping me occupied. Um, I never drive around in my car. If I've got like less than half a tank, um, I still feel fairly new to driving. Um, so I'm always like, I'll never be on, my light will never be on, I'll never be driving around with little petrol. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, I thought I need to fill my car up. Um, I've got like three bars um, and usually I get my husband to fill up my car because I'm just rubbish. Um, and then as soon as I said, I need petrol in my car, all this happened. And now I'm like, still not got any petrol in my car, but I've not really been many places to be honest in it. And when I do go anywhere, it's only a short journey. So I should be OK. I'm waiting till the panic's over. Um, As a good morning to Sharon. She's wishing everybody a good morning and creative uh, Beadoneers, 
Do you quite like that? I just call you beautiful beaders. Bead me is is quite good. Good morning, Carol. She says, morning, Natalie and everyone. Sorry I'm late. I didn't get the notification again. Must try and fix this. It's hit and miss, isn't it? Sometimes um, I would always, when I was watching, just keep refreshing. And if not, I'll go on to the page and it usually comes up there directly. Lucy's always lovely as well. She always shares the link into the Totally Handmade group. So I'll just look for the notification on there usually. Uh, good morning to you, Mina. Hope you're okay. Uh, Lucy says, uh, something different today. I can't wait to see this. They are really different. Um, I just, I really think they're lovely and they're really quite simple to do. As I say, um, this is my method of doing it. Um, there's a few different ways you can do them, but they all have the same lovely effect. Uh, good morning to Charlotte. How are you doing? Lucy has shared the link for you there. Good morning to Jean. We've got loads of you in this morning. Good morning, Brenda. She's raining and clapping on sea. Uh, oh, we actually have clear sky, says Ruth. Where are you watching from, Ruth? We'll come to yours instead. Uh, sun is shining in Milton Keynes, but it's freezing out there, says Lucy. And good morning to Pauline as well. She's a bit late today. You've not missed anything. I have been on the website. Um, I will show you it really quickly again. So if you go on to our usual lovely tutorials, you'll see this is what you're getting in your kit today. There are five different colours for you to choose from. They are three pounds each. And if you buy five, you're only going to pay for four. So if you can't decide, it really doesn't matter. You can just treat yourself. Um, OK, so I'm going to um, quickly say hello to Victoria and Carol and uh oh my friends call me chef thank you for pronouncing my name properly shafika yay i'm never good at pronouncing um names words anything so if i ever call you anything incorrectly or i pronounce something incorrectly like that just just give me a heads up um okay so i'm going to show you down on the mat today what we have for you so you can see the gorgeous colors i really like just I just running my finger across them. So we've got this beautiful kind of pale blue colour, the black, which I don't think is standing out as well on my camera. I hope you can see that it is really lovely. You're getting the mulberry colour and um, you've got white and you've got the deep purple as well. Again, I'm not sure what my favourite is. Um, yeah, I do. I like them all. Um, what I am going to do today, obviously, when when making the multi wrap bracelets, they're intended so they wrap. Just pop that around multiple times around your wrist to give it the impression that you're wearing numerous bracelets. Um, so you can do these to wrap around two, three times, whatever you 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 prefer. If you're going to do um, like a multi wrap. So three times around a wrist, you're usually looking at about 50 inches of your rat tail cord. Um, for the purpose of today's tutorial, I'm just going to show you one. Otherwise, we'll be here for a while. So I'm just going to show you how to make one size. But if you want to make it longer, you are literally just adding um, more rat tail onto that. So we'll get started. You don't really need much. I'm going to use this lovely mulberry colour in terms of tools you're only going to need a needle really. So what I do to measure my length, in fact, I will put myself back up a little bit. Oh, and I will knock my camera as I do it. So you take in your rat tail and what I tend to do is because we're going to make it with a few different kind of clasps, kind of like a bit of an extender so it'll fit all sizes. You usually need about an inch for each of your kind of buttonholes so to speak so I tend to hold it in my hand and then I will wrap it around my wrist for as many times as I want it so if I want it two times three times whatever it is and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to double that length so I'm going to make sure I've got the size that I'm after and I'm doubling that because it's going to go on both sides you're going to use the same one piece of your rat tail so let's see if I bring you back down if my camera is still in position. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. 
So measure the length that you want and you're going to find the middle by bringing the ends together and we're going to use our button as a clasp. Now as I say there are different ways you can do this. Sometimes you might want to start at your loop for your clasp. Sometimes you might want to start with the top with the button. I'm going to show you how to do the button way first. So you're going to take the end of your rat tail and you might want to give it a little bit of a diagonal cut like I've done already on this. You might want to pop a little bit of glue on it just to make it a bit sturdier. And we're just going to thread that button onto the cord and find the centre and bring that up. So we're going to put it on like this. Now I'm going to take my thread and I'm using about two and a half arm lengths of my thread. Um, it can be a bit tricky because obviously the longer your thread is, the more you can get tangled up. I'm hoping that won't happen today. Um, but really, you need to make sure that the thread that you're using is twice the length of your rat tail. Charlotte says it's raining in Hawaii. I bet you it's beautiful still though, isn't it? Tropical rain. Okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to tie my thread onto the top of my cord just to hold it in place. And I'm just going to do two little knots onto there. And I'm going to push that up to where my button is. And then I'm going to thread my needle. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a little sip of water. Now, it's entirely up to you how you want to to kind of position this while you're making it. A lot of people just like to hold it. You might want to attach it to a clipboard. I'm actually going to use my macrame board just to hold it in place. But for now, what I'm going to do is untangle my thread and move the bits out the way that I don't need. And as I'm just going to put that knot to the top where my button is. I haven't tied that quite as tight as I'd like. And I'm just going to thread through both ends. So I'm holding it near the top and I'm just bringing my needle through both of those ends of my rat tail. And you can do this as many times as you like. I'm going to bring it back over. I tend to do it maybe two or three times just to secure it in place. I'm really hoping I don't get tangled up today. And I know I'm going to. Look, I've already got myself tangled up. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to put a few. All that's doing is just bringing that in together. And then what you can do is you can cut this little tail end off or pop a little bit of glue onto it if you want, just where we've positioned it with the knot. And that is about as much sewing as you're going to need to do. Lisa says, this might be tricky for me. I only use big eye needles and I think it might be a bit hard to go through the thread. I have used a big eye needle with this, Lucy, and it went through the thread, no problem. Um, they're sharp on both ends, your, your, your big eye needle. To be honest, I think I actually prefer my big eye needle. I'm just using this because it was to hand. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my button at the top here. I'm just going to pop a little pin through that hole on my button just to keep it in place. And I'm going to move that little tiny tail of thread just out the way. You don't have to use a macrame board or a clipboard. You can just use, you know, nothing and just pop it in your hands while you're doing it. I tend to like doing it this way just to kind of keep it in place. I thought it'd be a little bit easy to show you like this today. We will see. Okay, so I'm just bringing 
my cords to run next to each other. And I'm taking my thread and I'm going to pop on my first lovely glass pearl bead, which are six millimetres. So just going to give that a cut. I'm wonky there, aren't I? Is that a bit better? Okay. So I'm just going to pop one of my pearls on to my needle. And I'm basically going to make like a figure of eight. So I'm taking my thread, which is on this side, and I'm going to bring it over this one here, this right cord. And I'm going to go under the left and bring that through. So what will happen is my first bead will sit here in the middle. Now, if you want to add a seed bead to begin with just to open this up, you can do. But I haven't with any of mine and they've worked just fine. So nothing's holding that in place at the moment. But that's where it's going to be. And then I'm going to take my thread, which is now coming under this one, and it's going to go over. But I'm going to go back through that pearl. It's going to capture it. So I'm going to go back through my pearl and then under this side. It looks a lot more tricky than it is. I promise you when we get going, you'll be like, ah, okay, I've got this. So we're just gonna thread that through. Now, what you can do as you go is you can just pull your cords just to position that first pearl in the middle. And then we're gonna add our next one. So again, it's a bit like a figure of eight weave. We're going to add our pearls each time. We're going to go over, under. Make sure you're not going through this rat tail. We are literally just going under. Got my beads all over the place there. It's going to go near to where it should be. Then we're taking it over this one, through the bead, and under this one. So it's over, through, under, over, through, under. And this is usually why I find it a little bit easier using my board, because these are usually held in place. I'm just going to pop these ends into that part just to hold them together a little bit. Okay, can you see this okay? So just pull that into position and you can move them up with your finger. Just going to reposition this because I think that's why we've got a little bit of movement in the top of it. That's better. Okay, and again, add your next pearl. And we are going over, under, pop your pearl in position, bringing it over the rat tail, through your pearl, and back under. So we're just doing a little figure of eight movement. And as we bring that back, they will start to just sit lovely. And you can push them up and move them with your finger. If they're a little bit too spaced out with your needle, just pick each side up and tighten that as you go. Can you bring your board down just a little? I most certainly can, Anna. Is that better? I feel like I'm wonky. I don't, I think I've, I've knocked my camera on. I, it's the camera that's wonky rather than my board. Okay, so pearl on. We're going over, under, back over this side, through the pearl, back under that rat tail. Pull that thread taut 
and it should sit nicely underneath. All I'm doing is just pushing that flat with my finger and moving it up a little bit so it sits in place. Adding on my next pearl. I just find it easy to add the pearls on each time so I don't forget what I'm doing and where I'm going. So over, under, pearl in place, back over the left side, back through the pearl and under the right side. You can hold your pearl in place as you pull that thread through. And little gentle pulls will just get that into position. Lucy says, I feel wonky every day. <laughs> and it also looks easier than she thought it would be. It really is easy. When I first seen them, I thought, oh, I'm not the best sewer. And I mean, you don't have to sew through the top. I just find, for me, I just feel it's a little bit more secure when you first attach it. You could always sew your button on too, but because it's got that lovely little loop, um, we can just directly put that onto the rat tail cord. So there's no sewing with this, really. There you go, popping it in and pulling that taut. Uh, Eileen is replying to Lucy. She says, most things are when someone's showing you or prepare videos to written instructions. I agree, I am definitely a visual learner. Um, if I'd have had a little look at the instructions, I would have definitely done it that way. I don't know whether it's the same way as the way I'm doing it. Um, there are probably numerous different techniques to secure on your button, um, but this wrapping of your, or securing of your pearls will be the same. So it, maybe it's nice to have, buy the kit, have a little look and see which method works best for you. What I'm gonna do there is just catch that thread just to pull that part tight and pull that there. Oh, Charlotte, thank you so much for the stars. That's really appreciated. Okay, pearl off, over, under, pull it through. Obviously, as you do these, the more you do them, the easier it's gonna get in terms of the more pearls that you, you've added. Your thread will get that little bit shorter. Um, and you'll get into a little bit of a motion with it. So that's how easy they are going on there. And there is a little bit of movement in them, so I like running my finger over them when I wear them. They're not quite fidget bracelets, but kind of gives, gives the same effect. So once again, as soon as I've gone underneath that side, I'm bringing it back through my pearl. I'm not threading through the rat tail, I'm just going underneath it. Pop that into position. Pauline's the same, she says she also finds video instructions a lot easier. I think it just depends on your preference for how to learn, isn't it? I think for me, written instructions are probably my least effective method of working. I have to read them over and over and over again. If it's got a photograph or a picture with it, which these will, then that's that's great because then I've got that visual. Um, I also like to listen to somebody giving instructions as well. Um, and that just makes things a little bit clearer for me. And you can pick those pearls up. You don't have to Hold them flat as you do it. Have I gone through? No, I'm okay there. I'm pulling it gently on one side, get it where I need it to be, and just pulling that thread at the other side too. 
think I tangled myself up a little bit there, didn't I? Just want that a little bit more taut. What have I caught that on? I've just twisted it slightly, that's all. So what you'll find is your pearls are keeping your rat tail the same distance. So you don't need to worry about spacing or anything like that. As long as you're just pushing them up against each other as you go. But I find using my board just helps keep these kind of tails of my rat tail in position. So going through and under. I'm just being really gentle. Don't need to pull it tight. It's just so they sit nicely against each other. So as I say, it's like a little bit of a figure of eight and we're just catching that pearl in between as we go each time. So it's going to go under and then I'm going to add my next one. Hannah says, good morning all, just having a sneaky watch from work. Um, we'll catch up properly later. This looks a bit like sewing to me, but we'll probably give it a go. Hannah, I've just said exactly the same thing. I am I'm not a sewer. I will occasionally darn a sock, um, but this isn't sewing. You're, you're not sewing. You're just using the thread to catch. You, you like wire work, Hannah, so you could pretend that this is just wire and you're just weaving it round. You'll be fine. Give it a go. For £3 a kit, what have you got to lose? Okay, are you going on? And you're just going to carry on with this until you've got the length you're after. So obviously, if you're going to do a multi-wrap bracelet, you're going to be doing this so you've got enough beads just making sure i've not caught that rat tail there i don't want to go through it just want to go underneath it um yeah you're just going to need to to add on as many as you like to to wrap around your wrist i mean if you are buying um the offer today and you're getting all five for the price of four you could even mix the colour of your beads up if you want it to, that might be quite nice. But in your kit, you're going to get the thread that matches your beads and your rat tail. So it's all picked out lovely for you. Just going to make that a little bit more taut. Lucy said it looks like a relaxing project to do. It is. You can you can do um, you know this sitting in front of the television or listening to some music or in front of a lovely audience of totally bead members. <laughs> right, all I'm going to do is if I don't feel it's quite taut enough, just going to pick it a little bit. Just get my needle underneath that and give it a little pull, and that will tighten them up. Eileen says, I'm running out of space in my bead storage. I need to find a new solution. Um, at the moment, I've got mine in bags and boxes, and I'm desperate to get my like little work studio space set up. Um, at the moment, um, where I am now, I'm in the dining room, which hasn't seen much dining for quite some time, I'll be honest. Um, but we decorated 
and swapped around some of the rooms upstairs. So my little boy is now in the big back bedroom. Um, oh, I've got a little knot there, haven't I? Oh no. Let me just pull that through. There you go. Um, yeah, so we've we've moved the rooms around. So I'm actually going to set up a bit of like a work and storage space in what was the nursery. Um, and then it just gives me the opportunity to go through all my lovely things and spend hours just looking at beads and putting them in boxes and maybe labeling them. I might treat myself to a label maker. <laughs> like any time I try and do a sort out and a tidy, I very often end up just like looking through like old photographs and birthday cards and things. I do collect an awful lot of random, random things. But to have a room just of like my lovely products and shiny gemstone cabochons and things like that. I need somewhere to keep my wire because it's everywhere. I think ideally, if you can, um, you know, you can store things properly, you get a lot, lot longer life out of your products because you're keeping them safe. Again, if need be, I'm just going to gently pull my thread to make it a little bit more taut if I haven't done it enough. <laughs> You're the same as me, aren't you? My beading supplies is half of my desk drawer. I'm hoping once I've revamped my built-in wardrobe, I should have room to have a drawer trolley for stuff. Oh, yeah, like a little hostess trolley to keep everything on. There's lots of there's lots of options. Though I might treat myself to um I don't know. I might get myself some nice new storage for the wardrobe and maybe some nice new kind of busts to display some necklaces and things on. I might have just a necklace room. <laughs> I did have a good sort out of a lot of my clothes because Nothing fits me like it used to. Let me just go back a step to make sure I've got that right. So, bead on. Coming under. Yeah, I've caught that just ever so. See, can you see this? I've gone slightly through my rat tail there so I'm just going to take that off because I don't want it to catch otherwise I won't be able to snug that bead up properly so just bear with me while I re-thread my needle so yeah I've um, had a big sort out of my clothes lots of stuff went to the charity shop um, I don't know pre-Frank I was a very different shape before I had my little boy <clears throat> Um, lockdown didn't help either <laughs> and I think that there's no point keeping them because I'm I'm not I'm probably not going to be that shape for quite a long time okay so bead on and go in under over through and I think I will add just a couple more on before showing you how to finish this just move my board up a little bit so you can see well you're all talking about um lovely spaces and work rooms now I have a workroom, but all my beads spill out onto the rest of the house. Give me space and I will fill it. <laughs> yep, I'm with you there. I often think if I just had a bigger house, I'd just fill it with more stuff. 
Um, but it's it's organised mess. When it's all over the floor, I know where it is. And the worst is when you do tidy up and then you're like, where was that? I was looking at that. It was just here. I think, was it Einstein who said something about a, a messy desk? Is a... Uh, I don't know. Something like a clear desk is a clear mind or something. I don't know. I don't like to work in in mess as such, but I'm not I'm not the most tidy of people. I like things to be clean but cluttered. <laughs> okay, so I'm going over with my bead on, under, over, catching that pearl again and going through. Just positioning them down. Well, Lucy has craft room OCD. Everything has to be in its right place and spotless. It's funny, isn't it? How we're all so different. My dad is um, very neat. And if he is even sitting next to a desk, he has to organise things so they're kind of symmetrical. I'll notice he'll like just slightly position things as he's sitting talking so i don't really know where i get my messiness from it's not instilled by my parents that's for sure and frank my son he likes likes tidying up he likes going around with his play vacuum cleaner and he loves a brush um but his toys get everywhere I often say there, I don't think there's a room in my house which isn't full of his toys or my beads. <laughs> okay, I'm going to bring this to a finish now because you're just watching me at these. Can you imagine how long it would have taken with me chatting and being distracted if I'd have done a multi-wrap one. I mean, this is definitely going to go over my wrist probably more than once. Okay, so pop your last pearl on. And then to finish it, what we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same motion, but without adding the pearl. So we're going to go over, under, just position that up a little bit and back over and under. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through this space here just once, and that's gonna bring my ends in close together again. And then we're just gonna finish as we started. So I'm just gonna stitch a couple of times through both ends of the rat tail that will start to hold them together i'm going to bring it round and through and over and through done that a little bit messier because I'm holding it flat down rather than up against me. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to make a clasp. So what I'd like is just with my finger just to make sure that they're kind of in position. I should have done that really before I'd finished uh, my knots just to make sure that they're lying flat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to make sure that when I add my, I'm going to do a couple of little buttonholes. So I'm going to just push them where they need to be. I'm going to do another little overhand knot. I'm going to keep this thread on because I'm going to knot that with it for now. You can add a bit of glue or you can just trim it off when you're done. And I'm going to push that up to where... 
I need it to be. And then if I can take my scissors, I can then just trim that edge off. Okay. Now, when we're going to make our buttonhole, you need to make sure that your button is going to fit through. Just going to cut this little bit off the top as well. As I say, you can glue that, but just where I was holding it in place. You want to make sure that your button is going to fit through. So I would usually just give it a little try because you don't want it too tight. You don't want it too big. You want it to just fit through nicely. So I'm going to hold it with my fingers where I think it needs to be. And I'm just going to do another little knot. And then I'm making an oversized one. So I can just pull very gently those down. And then when I'm happy with the size and I've tried my button in it, if it needs to be tighter, I can make it tighter. And then I'm just going to pull each one individually just to tighten that up. And then I'm going to add another one because what I can do is if I add a few different ones, then this can be adjustable and it can fit whatever size you like. So I'm going to go down again where I think it needs to be. Overhand knot to bring that through. Make it extra large just so I can manipulate that a little bit. I can check that my button fits through. If I need to make that tighter, I can do that. and then pull each one just to tighten that up. And you could do one, two, three, whatever you like with that. When you're happy, um, we'll do another one. Then what you can do is just trim off the ends do with some sharper scissors. And I would, this doesn't fray really this rat tail, it's really good. But if you want to pop, um, I don't know, you might want to finish it with a little bit of heat or a little bit of glue. And then you will find that it wraps round. I'll show you some of the other colours I've got. So I'd like to show you one which is longer so you can see how it looks when you fasten it on. So I'll use a longer one. And because I've done multiple knots, I can choose where about I want to fasten that. Natalie needs some decent scissors. I've got loads of scissors, Lucy. I've literally, just for some reason managed to get my children's ones out. <laughs> I will get some better ones. Doesn't matter if I'm just cutting thread, but if I'm cutting nice products, I want them to, to look nice. So obviously you can see if the, the longer you make these, the more they're gonna wrap. Um, could, as I say, make multiple ones and then add them as you go. So really straightforward to do, really, really easy. Um, I'm just reading some of your comments. Let me let me bring you back up. There's my bracelet. I think I'm going to put my black one on actually because I'm wearing my autumnal colours today. Charlotte says she loves it. Um, lovely bracelet, says Lucy as well. I'm going to give this a try. We need some bracelet helpers. What bracelet helpers? As in people, people to help make stuff. I'll give you a shout, Victoria. See, I'm often making things, so I'm just putting my bracelet on. And 
I'll have to make it in numerous different colours just to show you the choices. So it can be a little bit time consuming, um, but thankfully I love doing it. So it's not a chore for me. Um, Rachel says, oh my, I just got my happy post and I had ordered the metallic glass beads. They are wow beautiful. You've got some lovely goodies, I think, by the sound of it there. So all I've done on this one is because I've tied multiple knots, I'm using the longer one there for my clasp. Um, I'm wrap, wrapping that round multiple times. Just think they're lovely. They feel really nice on as well. As I say, there's movement in those beads. So I, I quite like to just run my finger across them. Uh, Camille says uh, she's made a few of these very relaxing. I've not made them before. Um, I did really very much enjoy doing them. Um, and they're very straightforward and they're just three pounds a kit. So have a little look on the website. If you do decide that you can't choose between the colours and you want all of them, you can buy five and you're only paying for four today. Um, oh, Oh, I see. No, it's a beaded length of wire with a snapper clasp. Uh, okay. Um, I could do with some bead stoppers for when I'm doing, like I've been making some kind of elasticated things and stuff at the moment. And there's always, at some point, they end up rolling off the end. Which brings me to what we are doing on Monday. So Monday, obviously, tis the season, isn't it now, with it being October. We're going to be making... Um, some lovely kind of Halloween themed inspired jewellery. You can see me getting them out for you there, can't we? Let me move this. Um, so yeah, we're going to be playing about with some lovely elasticated um, bracelets with, let me show you, some lovely skull spaces. And again, I think they're um, quite unisex. They're good for any size wrist because you could they've got a lot of give in them with them being elastic really easy really fun to do um and i might be playing about with some other little halloween skull beads and beauties for you showing you all the different things that you can do with the things from totally beads um i love love seasonal wear um i love having things which you know i think oh this time of year I'll get them out. So lots of lovely Halloween things to come um, and autumnal stuff to come for you in the next couple of weeks. So please come join me on Monday next week and Friday too. So I hope you've, and um, oh, Mina says, Natalie, message me if you want help with elasticated bracelets. Okay, my love, I will do. Thank you so much. Um, Victor, oh, Rachel's put, ordered my kit from today. Can't wait to try them. Whoop, they're a bargain, Rachel. Please share and show me what you've done. Um, I hope you like doing them. So thank you for joining me today. Um, again, another quite quick and easy make. Well, it's quick depending on how long you want to make it. Um, but once you've got used to that motion, that kind of figure of eight, it comes really easy together. So thank you so much uh, for joining me. I hope you have a lovely weekend um, and I will see you next week. So lots of love and light to you all. Take care. Bye.